All right, and now we get into um, lists. Lists get a little bit confusing, but they're really cool. And once you get the hang of them, they're really helpful and not too hard to use. Um, but again, they're a little bit confusing. You have basically, in HTML5, you have basically three types of lists. Unordered list, ordered list, and description list, which are weird, kind of odd, or you can also call them definition lists. Let's talk about each individually. An unordered list is exactly what you would expect. It's an unordered list, usually with bullets or a some sort of a little bullet type of thing, some sort of marker. Um, and you can see a good example of this right here with the dots and the bullets here. Okay. Um, they're really easy to do. You use the UL, which is short for unordered list, UL, not hard. And that says, hey, everything I'm going to do from here until I close the UL is part of an unordered list. Then LI is the actual list element. Okay, LI for list. Um, so here's an example of how to write this little list in HTML. Okay, again, not terribly hard. You start with the UL. I really highly encourage you to indent with just a space or two, whether you use tabs or spaces, it doesn't matter. It's okay. There's a big debate about you know, the difference between spaces and tabs, and you know, it, there's always this long debate with coders about that. Um, but do indent one form or another, make it so it's nice and pretty and lined up so it's consistent. Um, it'll make your life a lot easier, really, truly, honestly. And it's not, you won't see this indentation in the actual HTML because spaces are ignored, as we've talked about a couple times already. But it helps you figure out what you're doing and write proper HTML. So um, it's very, very useful. So anyway, UL, for your unordered list, we close out the UL here. And then we have each of the different list elements, li for TCP IP. And then we close it off, okay, li IP, li HTTP corresponds to this. So each one of these is one of the list elements right here. And each list element is a block level element so that it puts a return at the end. And same with the UL, it'll put a return at the end. Okay, um, they're really useful. Um, it's really nice. You can really customize, you know, the bullet or the format that's being used and do some really great stuff with lists. Um, and we will be using lists a lot, ordered and unordered, especially unordered. They're just really, really nice. Um, so get used to it, just do it. I have seen many a times examples where they open the LI and they don't close it and they just start a new LI. Technically speaking, you can get away with that uh, because the implication is that if you start a new LI, everything else before it is part of that list. But then there's some weird extra spaces that are included and it's just unnecessary. Just close out your LIs, okay? Now, um, ordered lists are almost exactly the same thing. Um, and it can be a numbered or lettered or Roman numerals, however you want to do it, but um, we're going to actually set the type it's going to be using. And you can even do this uh, similarly with an unordered list, which we'll talk about later when we get to more advanced formatting. But we start start off with um, setting up attributes here, and this is a good time to segue right into attributes. And then we use li uh, element for um, uh, containing the items of the list. Uh, but let's just show you. Okay, so this is just the default ordered list. Um, we'll get into this uh, type as we get going. We'll show you examples of this. I'm not worried about this right now. We're just going to use the default for now. Okay, so an ordered list, it looks, if you look at this, it's very, very similar to this page. UL, LI, 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 UL, closing it. So we do much the same. OL for ordered list, close out the ordered list and li, 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 li. And yes, you can have an unordered list in, within an ordered list and vice versa within elements of the list. But generally speaking, you want to have for an ordered list, you want to start out with each list element. And each list element could contain an ordered list or another unordered list um, for either or. Uh, but you generally want to put the LIs immediately following. You don't have things in here that are not part of the list because that gets interpreted by the browser and be very. it can be very, very, very strange. So we avoid that. But in this case, 
Now, you haven't specified what type of list this is going to be displayed at, what that's going to be numbers or um, Roman numerals or uh, letters. You can specify that extremely easily. We haven't done that, so we're leaving it to the default, which the default can be different on each browser. So be careful about that. But for now, it's a perfectly good, simple example. Then we have these, this DL, which is a very odd thing to do. We don't use this very often, but we will use it in a few of the assignments. Uh, description list. Um, uh, again, I, it's one of those things I kind of don't really use this very much, so I always have to remind myself how to use this. I use ULs and uh, uh, order lists and unorder lists all the time, but so DLs are very strange. Um, let's just get into it. So we have... Um, the it, it kind of allows us to do a little bit in it, a little bit of a, um, you know an item and the description of it. Now how this is displayed by the browser is very much subject to interpretation, even more than the other stuff. So we kind of avoid these without proper formatting and control formatting, and you'll do that with CSS when it gets further on. Um, but yeah, so you have the DL for the uh, descriptive list, just like you have UL or OL. So you, that specifies this whole area as part of a description list. And then DT is short for, what was that again? Um, the uh, term, and then DD is the uh, description. So it's kind of weird that it describes it that way or puts it that way. Um, and so we have DD, TT, DD, TT. And you can have more than one description down here, but generally you only have, uh, well, you have a DT and then you close it off and then you can have sub descriptions. So it kind of gives us a list with sub lists, if you will. Again, it's not ordered, it's not unordered, it's somewhere in between and it's kind of weird. I would just frankly do it as an ordered list with, or an unordered list even without the, um, uh, with uh, uh, list within the list. That would just my preferential thing to do. I never think to do these, but you also notice it doesn't by default put the bullets in. It default, by default, generally will put tabs in. So there is some value to that, but again, I try and avoid those ones. Um, so then we also, um, because we're writing in HTML, we might have to display special characters. You notice that special characters are used by the HTML, like less than and greater than typically help us display, dis are used by HTML by the browser to interpret that this is part of the actual element I'm declaring, okay? Um, and so in order to actually write a less than or greater than, if I just type less than, it thinks the browser thinks the rest of what, I've, what follows is part of an element. So you can't just type less than in the actual text file for the HTML code. You actually have to do ampersand LT for less than followed by a semicolon. So these are special codes that are set aside. There's a lot of them. A ton of these and you can even have number codes there associated with the, all these different ones as well but they allow us to specify certain characters that in this case that are very difficult to otherwise specify through html because i can't specify a space if i just put a space it will just be interpreted as a space and if i have 10 spaces it'll just be interpreted as one space whereas if i have 10 nbsp which i talked about last chapter non-breaking space uh, if I have 10 of these with a semicolon after so to ampersand mbsp semicolon and then ampersand mp mbsp semicolon and so on and so on if I have 10 of them in a row I will have 10 spaces and that can or can't be used might or might not be useful okay ampersand is also one of those uh, signs symbols that is used by a lot of different things and can be interpreted in different ways this avoids it being interpreted and just explicitly literally places an ampersand in the HTML display. Same with copy. It's kind of hard to specify the copy character, but it's very easy in HTML. You just do an ampersand copy. And if you ever forget this, just Google HTML code or HTML, yeah, HTML code, character, whatever, copy. It, it will it will show you exactly this immediately. Um, it's they're very well used, very well known. Uh, very very well documented. Um, now we get into this weird thing about the div element. Uh, so div allows us to specify a an area 
that is set aside from other areas. Now we're going to use this, especially in conjunction with CSS, to do some fancy formatting. But for now, we're just going to say that this area has been divided away from the other, if you will. Um, it is div. There's two uh, options. There's div and span. And if memory serves, the biggest difference between div and span is that div is by, def by default a block element, block level element, whereas it goes the whole page the whole width of the page and span is a inline element which it basically it won't put a carriage return after it or a, a, a formal uh, put move the next thing to the next line so that is the biggest thing we'll be using div and span quite a bit um, I just mentioned it I don't know really why it's here yet because it's kind of less important than anything but we will definitely be using div and span extensively as we get going. But right now it's a little too kind of out of place here. Um, HTML5 introduced some really cool structural elements um, uh, that we're going to talk about really quickly here. And so they, these elements are kind of, they kind of help you organize your page. Now don't confuse head and header with each other. Okay. and heading. The heading, heading is like h1, h2, h3 for heading levels. That's generally within your body of your page. The head is the area that you specify the title, any meta things, any you know, uh, anything other than you know some properties of the document that actually is not displayed. The header is the part of the page that's at the top. This could be like your little logo in the title, not, not, it could include the title of the page, but it's not the title of the page. It could just be another display of the title. Um, your company logo, your, you know, if you're writing a paper, your header is, you know, your name and your, the class you're in and the date, that type of stuff, okay, that you typically end up writing in the header of your page. Think of it as, you know, the, the, uh, you have a, you know, normal sheet of lined paper and you have that space up at the top that is not lined, that's your header, okay? So that's pretty straightforward. What you think about it? Nav is just an area that has navigation for the page that you specify that this is, this is how I navigate from, my, from one page to the other. Um, it's a nice way of designating it. You don't have to put things within a header. You can put heading, header elements or elements that are appropriate to a header outside of a header and not use that. But it's nice to help you organize the page. And I really am going to encourage you, well, I'm going to tell you to use it. Um, so nav is another one. You can, um, uh, it tells you, the, the browser that, hey, this is going to be my navigation area. And then we can do apply special formatting to that specific area in that area alone uh, using CSS, which we'll talk about a little bit. Um, the nav doesn't have to follow the header. It can be above the header. It can be below the header. It can be at the bottom of the page. It can be within the footer. Um, but you generally try and set an area of, of navigation. It could be on the side. It could be on the right side. It could be on the left side. It could be anywhere on the page. However, it's just nice to say, hey, this area right here is my navigation. Okay, same thing for the main. That's kind of the main body. It's kind of redundant for body, but generally speaking, all of these elements, these are all part of the body. Okay, so this is your main part of your body. And within your main, it's not uncommon to have little areas of div that are, um, or spans that are, you know, appropriate, appropriate to that. Okay, but that's kind of weird. Um, this is what we're going to talk about more and more with a block model. And then you have your footer, which is just that, the footer. Usually it's at the bottom of the page. Um, usually it's like it, you could, a lot of times we'll have the nav area in the footer. It's very appropriate, but you would want to specify that as a footer and then the nav area within. It just helps. You'll see why, as we get going, why these things are totally, totally useful. Um, so then we have, perfect. Um, we have uh, an example of how to do this. So within the body, I have my header, you know, blah, 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 my main, blah, 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 or navigation area. I put my navigation buttons right here. We did this actually in chapter one of first assignments, okay? And then the main and then the footer, okay? And then close out the body. Um, this is an example of that kind of 
format um, with a uh, with our uh, one of the examples from the book. We don't actually do this one, but it's a nice example. It has your header area up here, your nav area, your main with a whole bunch of lots of things with heading one and some text, heading one again and some text, and then the footer, and then close out the body. Okay, so it just helps for organization. You don't have to do this when you're writing your own pages. You do have to do it when you're writing pages for this class because I want you to get in the habit of it. But they won't always have it. All right, we'll start with this on part three. I just want to make sure I keep these uh, videos short and sweet. See you in, see you in a second.